Hi everyone, it's Cherie from 12 by 12 Cardstock Shop and today I'm bringing this little girl from MarjorieAnnDesigns.com. The file is called Science is Fun and it is girl number two. I imported her into Cricut Design Space at 13.75. Uh, that's the width. I let the height auto adjust. This paper pack I brought to you guys a few months ago. It is the Doodle Bug Seasons pack. Part of the reason of why I'm doing the little kids with a science set is because the paper is perfect. You can use papers from the pack, and these are what I made. This is just something I've learned to do on my own, the little beakers. But if you don't have the pack and you want something instantly, there is the there are these printable pages from MarjorieAnnDesigns.com. These papers are weird science papers. And I'm bringing them to you just because I wanted to let you know, if you do print your own paper, I recommend getting the 25 pack or the 50 pack. I'm not sure what it comes in because I have so many of them. Of American Crafts Smooth Cardstock. I'm showing here how well it takes the ink and it prints. It does not bleed. It does not smear. The paper is very absorbent. And I prefer cardstock over paper for my photo mats just because I'm gluing them. I don't want them to warp and it is very durable. Now here I just kind of flipped over into switching her hair out. That's because that is the hair that came with the file, and I didn't like it. It was just too big for me, and also the reason I dry piece is because the arm that is on the file, I didn't like how short it was in comparison to the other one, so I lengthened it and cut it out again after I played with it in Cricut Design Space to make sure it was a length that I liked. The hair that I'm using is from girl number one, just the, the top part, not the braids. The braids do come with girl number two. Now, this paper, I go between using shrimp and peach. I have a collection of peach just from over the years, and whatever I grab on the mat is the one that I use. If you do use peach and it's or shrimp and it's too bright, use the backside because it does dole down the bright orange tone in it. And it also makes a big difference on the kind of inks you use. The two colors of inks I recommend for the shrimp color paper is Clay Mask and Apricot is a secondary in a pinch just because that will pull more of the pink and the peach color out instead of the orange from the shrimp and use the back side because I noticed that that's more of a peachy tone than the textured side. That's just recommendations for me since I've been doing this so long. But if you're happy with the textured side, continue to use it. And if you do want to tone it down a little, the inks that you use on the outer edges is what makes the biggest difference. So my white paper is American Crafts. It is textured. That's what I used on her socks and her lab coat. The real pretty purple is American Crafts textured color grape. The soles of her shoes is American Crafts Textured Color Charcoal. Her hair is going to be in the color by American Crafts. It's also textured in the color Chestnut. All of my paper is textured except for the eyes. Her skirt is also American Crafts Textured Color Caramel, which I use on my Franklin Bears. And lastly is her magnifying glass, which is American Crafts Textured Color Taffy. I was showing that last piece because it had a chin. Well, I thought it was a chin on the face, on the file when you cut it out. That's actually supposed to be its neck. And it drives me crazy just because it is hard to differentiate what it is. So I trim that off so it, it is not on my piece up on the, uh, on the right upper hand corner. And I recut out the nose and stretched it. That way I could make my own makeshift neck. So after we put her socks and the soles on to her shoes, we then put the shoes on. And here I realized that I wasn't supposed to glue her shirt down first. It was supposed to go the skirt and then the shirt. The reason I, I had actually paused the video, and that's kind of why you see now a border around it, but I'm okay with the border. I wasn't going to go in and edit it again since I had actually completed the whole video and did it frame by frame in real time and recorded what I was doing, but I noticed the length of it was a little too long for what we're, what time limit we have for YouTube, which is fine. I don't mind doing voiceovers, but that's what the little glitch was. 
I ended up pausing the video, recutting out the shirt again, and inking it one more time to do it the correct way. But I left that in to show you guys that even after all the years I've paper pieced, I still make mistakes. Some of them are fixable, and some are not. This, I was able to save the base, which I was happy with, and I wasn't going to keep ripping the shirt off, because nobody's going to know except for me, and of course you guys now. After I put her skirt on and then her shirt, I put just the lab coat on itself. And I'm holding off on the little flaps that go on the lab coat. I do use the Cosmic Shimmer Flake and Glitter Glue because it, you apply it, it's iridescent, but when it's dry, it dries clear and it's sticky, very tacky. So if you touch anything else, be careful because it will end up on your fingers, which you'll see later on the video. Um one of the pieces stuck to my hand and I just kept gluing until I was done and then I removed it and it's the little ring over there on the right that goes to her magnifying glass. I ended up giving her ears because I did change the hair and since I shortened the length of the hair, just the front part, I ended up creating ears because the little boy that I'm working on as well does have ears and I didn't want her not to have ears. All I did was cut out the nose two more times and use those for ears. You can actually not use ears. She's just as cute without them. It was just me because I go through the toss-up if I'm going to add earrings or not. And I don't want to not have ears <laughs> and not be able to put on earrings if that's what I decide. And I just use the little pearl accents that 12 by 12 cardstock shop has for earrings. So I glued her head down. And then I'm, after I glued her ears to the back of her head, I then glued her head down and then the hair. And here I'm showing this again because when I go to trace on my eyes, I don't want them moving. So I glue the black, the black parts of the eye onto the white, however I want them. I turn them over and I put a little bit of the Cosmic Shimmer Flake and Glitter Glue on the back. I allow it to dry. And then I put them on the face and that's how I keep them from moving when I trace them and it helps me with positioning them. I've been doing it for years. Now the acetate I was showing there, you can actually glue cardstock onto it. You want to put that same cosmic shimmer flake and glitter glue on the back of your cardstock, let it completely dry until it's very sticky, and then apply it to your acetate. That way it stays, it won't move. If you use glue, the glue seeps from the back, so you can't glue the entire thing. And also, it's the best thing for adhering acetate, which I did here for her magnifying glass. I put it around the ring and let it dry while I was working. And then I went ahead and just attached the ring to it. I'm putting cling over it so it doesn't get scratched. Just because from moving it, you'll notice that acetate scratches. And if I don't keep this and I do sell it, I do not want my customers to receive a piece with a bunch of scratches on it. Now, I'm not gluing it to her arm because I'm not sure if I'm going to use the magnifying glass or a beaker yet until I get all of my pieces sorted out and completed because I do play around with a lot of them. There in that quick capture was the difference in the arm size lengths. I wanted it a little longer since there wasn't any arm being exposed, like, you know, the cuff being rolled up and a little bit of her forearm. There wasn't anything except her hand. So I wanted it a little bit longer to look more realistic. Some of the changes and additions I made are a little bit more advanced. You can glue it together as is, not a problem, and it'll look just as cute. I just sometimes go an extra mile and it's something I'm known for and I don't mind it. I went ahead and put her pigtails on. Now I do recommend putting the bows on first. Don't just glue the pigtails on like me. Don't be a me. I didn't glue the arm down yet and there I was showing you guys because that way it allows me to lift it up a little and put the bows on underneath it and also if I decide to change the bows or add Nouveau drops to them or pearl accents, I can still get to it. Or even if I just want to go over it with a glitter pen, I didn't want to commit to gluing it down yet. I am going to show a trick at the end, though, for the little pieces like the bow. I know that when we put our pieces on a card or a scrapbook and it's 
on a page and somebody's continuously showing it off and we're turning pages and looking at it, that sometimes it will cause the piece to tear off because there isn't, it's not the glue failing, it's that there's not enough paper to paper contact. If you're new to scrapbooking, I definitely recommend starting with Barely Art Glue because it has more forgiveness and doesn't instantly dry upon contact. The art glitter glue that I'm using, it does almost instantly dry on contact. That's why I couldn't get the skirt underneath the shirt after I realized I had glued them in the wrong order. I had just gotten so carried away trying to get all of the colors in the video and the changes I made. That way, if you go get the file and you're not like, wait, her hair is different or my sleeve is shorter, I wanted to cover all bases. Plus, I wanted to mention and plus I wanted to include about the smooth cardstock and the doodle bug pack. And that's how I just kind of got mixed up on the order of the shirt and the skirt, but it was fixable. Now, there's the beaker because I'm not sure if I'm going to use the magnifying glass or the beaker. That's why I didn't glue it down and I just used the sticky Cosmic Shimmer glue. Now, for the piece that I was telling you about the trick, when you have super tiny pieces, I just add glue to the back of my base and I allow it to dry. Then it at least gives it some reinforcement so it doesn't fall off or become detached from turning the pages or opening and closing a card. There's the finished piece. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. And if you need any help with anything, just go ahead and leave a comment. Take care.